very special welcome to all of you who are watching us on Comcast, channel 23 here in Boston, on the RCN cable system, channel 83 here in Boston, and who are watching us on bnntv.org. That's the net online. And also thanks to our media guru, our media specialist, Ted Lewis, who we will be talking to in just a little bit. You are now watching us on YouTube as well. That's right, folks, we are international. Our special guests tonight on the program, Sonia Joyner is with us tonight, Andrea Lyman, Ted Lewis, and my co-host, Jim Sayer. Sit back and let's hear what Jim has to say about what's coming up here in the Bay State. Jim. Nice to have you, John. Nice to have our guest. Thank you for showing up tonight. We've got to be on our game because we've got three top guests here tonight. That's right. <laughs> okay. Um, I was just uh, doing a movie in Quincy, the Quincy Shipyard. Mm -hmm. the name Finest. Right? Finest Hour, yes. And it's the opposite. Years ago, there was a movie made in Massachusetts. They only used all women. Do you remember that movie? About Mona five. Lisa Smiles? Yes. The only women were allowed to work it. No men. Not just only women. Only Caucasian women. Really? Oh, yes. I didn't know that either. Oh, yes, I do know oh, that. Oh, <laughs> well, this movie has both sides well, well populated with everybody else, and we also are not using any females on it. No females. Because this is a military-based film? It's about the Coast Guard. Okay. It's about the two ships that sank in 1952, two oil tankers. So it's all men. Back then, it was all Coast Guard. And uh, they, I haven't seen down the Cape in Chatham next month, and they will be using some females, but I hear there's only a few, maybe seven or eight. There's going to be a dance. Yes, that's the right. time for the dance, for all the <laughs> military people to bring their wives and girlfriends for the dance. Now, there's a busy season. What else is happening? There's the finest hour. Well, we'll go, there's another movie. I'm not too sure the name of it yet. I think it's coming late February, early March, and like the Adam Sandler movie a few years ago, people said, it's coming, it's coming, in the last minute it doesn't. Right. So they don't want to give it out yet the name of it, but it's coming. A lot so of things far. happening during this busy season. We have, as Jim mentioned, we have three special guests with us. Sonia, Joyner, Hi. welcome. Sonia and I have a relationship going back to Underdog that was shot in Rhode Island, as a matter of fact. We were both police officers on that film. Yeah. Welcome. Good to see you again. Thank you. Thank and you Ted for Lewis, having me. Ted Lewis, of course, is joining us once again. We're going to talk a little about what's happening here in the theater district, because something very special is taking place here. And we're going to talk a little about that. Thank Andrea you. Lyman, welcome. Thank you. Sonia and Andrea, both your first time on the program. Yes, yes. Well, mm -hmm. it's a pleasure to have both of you. Now, you're a singer as well as an actor, yes. is that correct? And that, that's your primary um, uh, mm, career objective mm, is singing? or It's kind of both. Like this week, mm -hmm. I have four musical shows coming up. Mm -hmm. I have a show called Broadway Lady where I do show tunes for um, different events. So I have four of those coming up. But... Then bookending it, I'm doing two different films. A film tomorrow and one uh, District C11 I'm working on uh, Thursday. Is that an independent film? or is Yes. It? Okay. Wes Williams the third, second. C11, that's, that's a district in Dorchester. Police yeah. offices. That's right. Right. On Gibson Street. Yes, it is. It's a, that's what it's called. It's a, <laughs> that's the name of it. Sonia, you're involved with a couple of projects too, right? Yes, I am doing uh, Slam Boston which is, uh, it's actually 16 plays. They're only about 10, 12 minute long. And eight of them will be on Tuesday, December 2nd. The other eight is on December 3rd. And then the top eight will go to the finals on December 4th. A couple of wow. years ago, I had a chance to see Sonia in a film. You played a, was it a congresswoman or a presidential person that was giving a speech while the writers were having some sort of a confrontation off stage. Oh, yes. I Not was actually a congresswoman, I think. Mm -hmm. And that was during a slam. Oh. And Ted Lewis, our media person. Yes. I don't even know where to begin, Ted. There's so much going on here. Well, uh, let, let's start with the, the big surprise. November 17th at 7.30 at the Strand Theater is going to be a question and answer with the original cast of Trip to Bountiful. Oh, that's fantastic. But before I go any further with this announcement, you have to go on the website and you have to get tickets. But the thing that you, you should remember, it is free, but you have to sign up for tickets. There is an RSVP. Yes, okay. yes. 
But uh, I believe as it stands now, Cecily Tyson will be there, Vanessa oh. Williams, Blair Underwood, and this is and chances are uh, the director Michael Wilson. This is going to be phenomenal for the Strand. I was just in the Strand shooting a video. It's just it's the most beautiful place that I've worked in in a long time. Uh, our viewers would know the Strand from many television programs that, uh, about theater that was actually shot in that in that venue. It's 96 years old. It's right in the 96. heart of Dorchester, right in Dupin's Corner, celebrating its 96th birthday, as a matter of fact. Um, and also, uh, I saw Ragtime there mm. a few years ago. I saw oh, Ragtime there a few yeah. years ago. And also, a little rela we have a little relationship with the production you just talked about. Right. Because I did a review. You certainly did. An in New York. Review. Thank you. In New York, I went down to New York just to see that. Right. Trip and to Bount Bountiful is a great. It was a great production. And it was a, it, Ted, it was a, it was a full house when I went to see it on Broadway. You know, the amazing thing, I, I shot five commercials for Trip to Bountiful. Uh, and the Sunday that we did the exit interviews, there was 900 people Sunday afternoon online waiting to see Trip to Bountiful. We picked out and selected 37 people, and they came out and found us. This was phenomenal. They came out and found us. And you can go on uh, the Trip to Bountiful Broadway website, and you will see the video there. Uh, it was just amazing. And when we did the uh, set design interview, and we did the music interview, and we were talking to people, it, for some reason, they were getting all choked up. I said, there's something about this production. It's, 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 you know, everybody's getting all choked up here. And come to find out, it really touched base. I, I don't want to give away the plot, but it's about life, it's about uh, community, it's about going back and things like that. Well, Don't this way, this folks, it, it's not unfamiliar to you. Right. It's not something that's unfamiliar. Right. Mm -hmm. So, Jim, all sorts of things happening here. Yeah, John, we're trying to stay busy. Boston, like I said, is a small market compared to New York right. and L.A., and now uh, we're trying to get as many movies, and I always talk about the most important thing, is trying to get a TV series here. Oh, yeah. And we're always trying to, you know, were we looking well, at something with that? We filmed a couple of them in the last few years, but okay. nothing has been uh, picked up yet. So that's what we're trying to do right now is get it. I think they said by the spring or summer, there might be another series trying to make it here in Boston. Well, they do the pilots here. Yes. And then they, what we want is like... Them to work here all the yes. time, to stay yes. busy. Like we work because in the Rhode Island. For hire, actually chasing, the wait, right. what is, chasing life, mm -hmm. I think it is, that yep. um, they did the pilot here and it and it was picked up, Not but yet. they're shooting it in L.A. There's yeah. a whole lot of things that are uh, series that are in Boston, but not David E. Kelly. None of his why? actually he, he's shoot from this here. area. I know. He's from the area. They're, uh, well, they all take place in Boston, but right. fake Boston. Right. Which, by the way, I just wanted to say a funny thing. I, when I was in L.A., and we, um, the, the thing we were shooting was in East Coast. It was body proof, and it was taking place in the East Coast. Mm -hmm. So Which certain started things in Rhode the, Island. Yeah, started in Rhode Island, and then they flipped to um, L.A. And the funny thing is what they'll, they'll do. Like one, one time it was supposed to be November, and the characters were um, on a lunch break, and they ate outside, you know, the little thing outside yeah. of the, the office building. was you, like, you wouldn't do it here. <laughs> nobody would be eating no. outside in, in November. Right. Right. And then there was another where there was a wedding, and they said, this is an upscale um, wedding, so people need to be dressed a certain way. Nobody had on boots. It was, it was um, the wedding was either November or December. Mm -hmm. Nobody had on boots. But they coats. didn't have on scarves right. and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, and it's like, nobody so, would dress this right. way. Sonia can relate to that because a couple of years ago, Sonia and I had worked mm. on a project in Rhode Island, Underdog. They were great leather jackets, weren't they? But when it's 110 100... degrees out, yeah. I work it up here too, would you? Yeah, well, we had <laughs> to get them, they had to put us in a bus air condition for the day, but mm -hmm. we were in. Mm. Polyester and leather. Yes. But you've done a lot, too, over the last 10, 15 years. Yes. I primarily do a lot of theater. And I was um, going to say that you, too. You do a lot of theater as well. I do. I do, um, I do a lot of the singing stuff, my, mm -hmm. my own show. Musical but, theater. Yeah. But I've lately been doing a lot of films and producing our own stuff mm -hmm. with uh, Ted Garland and uh, Don Warnock. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. We um, have teams together. We do, certainly we do the 48 hours, but yeah. we do other films uh, too. We just 
regularly seem to be making a lot of films together. Some of the it theater works. theater productions you've been in. Uh, well, right now I'm rehearsing for Susical the musical. Okay. Coming up in December. Based uh, on Dr. Seuss's characters, right? Yes. Where is that? Primarily Horton the Who. It's going to be um, at Stetson Hall mm -hmm. in Randolph. Oh, okay. Uh, December 12th, 13th, and 14th. Four shows. Nice holiday production. Yeah, great mm -hmm. for the kids. A lot of kids coming mm -hmm. to see that one. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, I'm doing the slams. Over the years, I've done 12 Angry Jurors. I did Avenue Q twice. Uh, Good People. I did that in Walpole last year. So I've done quite a bit. I'm starting to do a lot more musical theater. And what about independent theater like Andrea? Uh, in terms I mean independent film like Andrea. <laughs> uh, in terms of film, I've done, oh, I don't even know how many 48 hours. I've done them in Portland, Boston, and Providence. Mm -hmm. uh, hoping to expand that maybe this year. Uh, and recently worked a lot with Brian Casey mm -hmm. in Rhode Island. I've done a lot of Rhode Island stuff. Mm -hmm. Richard Mar Griffin in Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. So I spend a lot of time on 95. Rhode Island seems to be picking it up on them. Well, that's where that's we, right. That's where we shot yes, on. Yes, yeah, they do. I know, like Colin Turtle was up there for a long time doing no that. No one knows better than Ted on how and important it is to... And something bleeds is shooting uh, there now? Um, yes, yes. It's, it's the uh, uh. Vinnie Pat movie, The Boxer. That's shooting yeah, up there but now. what is it called? Some, I know it Something has bleeds. Bleeding. Bleeds, yeah, I forget. It's a Vinnie Paz movie who was the boxer Is that there. the working title bleeds. or is that the actual title? Bleed to something, yeah, is the actual title for it. But a Vinnie Paz who was the boxer, a famous boxer for years up mm -hmm. there and stuff, and he won the world championship and stuff. And they are filming. They filmed last night at Twin Casinos up in, yep. uh, they mm -hmm. filmed there last night. And uh, I think they'll look up on more people in the next couple of uh, days, the next week yeah. sometime. Card dealers for black Oh, people. I got the call for that. Did you? I did get the call, but I... I You're busy. too busy. I know. Too busy. I'm surprised <laughs> you, you answered the phone. <laughs> but I did get... I, I got two calls for that, and but I just... I had to turn them down. I just... I, can't go. Mm -hmm. That's because you're so involved with, with social media, and that's <laughs> oh. and that's important. We're gonna yeah. we're just gonna uh, invite our home audience six one seven seven zero eight three two eight zero. Give us a call. We're cable casting live right here, BNN TV, and we'd like to hear your comments, your concerns, your issues, your questions, whatever you want to ask here tonight about the movie industry, the entertainment industry, musical theater, how to get into theater, and what you can do. You know, you're sitting home right now, and you're saying, hey. Hey, Jim. Hey, John. You know, we like all of this stuff, and we find it important, too, but we don't really want to get that involved with the acting component of it. What, what can we do? Well, I'm glad that you asked that question, because, Jim, what can they do? They can push for tax breaks, right? Well, not only they, if they don't like to act, they can go behind the scenes, John. Mm -hmm. They can be hairdressers, makeup people, wardrobe people. A lot of people who are very good at that think oh, they don't do that in the acting world. They right. do. What makes us so good looking on film <laughs> is the ancillary is work. The is the people it behind, behind that's it. right, who's making us right. up in uh, wardrobe, you know, nice right. clothes. We do wear nice clothes. Mm -hmm. And you can contact your, your state reps mm -hmm. and your state senators, not your congressional reps or your congressional senators, but the state reps, the state senators, and say, look, let's keep those tax breaks alive. Yeah. Let's keep those tax breaks going because we want the movies Right. Shooting right here in the Bay State. That's right. And that's what well, we need, the tax break. That's right. very important. Yep. What people um, a lot of times don't realize, because they think of the film tax breaks and they think of the stars or even us as actors, mm -hmm. but what they don't realize is the other folks that you're not even thinking right. about. Like, for instance, um, I read about somebody that uh, has the porta potties. His business, the business has gone so dry high, high. Sure, yeah. and you know, because we, they, they right. knew that they, and lumber, yeah. because they build sets, they build and it's just all these things that you don't even think about. The people mm -hmm. that do craft services, That's right. and and you know, and and the, the most food. important is the public relations. It gives the state people right. see these mm -hmm. movies Tourism. and see these TV shows all over the right. world and say, "Hey, Boston's a great city." The zookeeper. Prove that. I mean, that right. movie made Boston shine. There's no question right. about that. And people came, come here and say, I want to see Boston too. Mm -hmm. How do they come here? Based on what they've seen. Or why right. do they come the here? Movies. Based on what they've seen in the movies right. or what they've seen on TV. Mm -hmm. Spencer for Hire, I'm sure, was responsible by its own nature of having that show sh shot here in Boston, in Massachusetts, responsible for a lot of people 
coming here as tourists. Yeah, cheers. Cheers for years was the number oh. one tourist right. I know, it's so funny. For years. Yeah. And people, people still, still ask for cheers. Yeah, they yeah. still go there. Oh, yeah. They, they still want the cheers because yeah. now they have like, these right. different fake cheer bars yeah. Yeah. in different places. And people, oh, let's go here. And I'm like, no, no. And I'm like, don't buy the t-shirt there. No, no, don't no. buy it there. No, 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 Ted they made done, a lot of money. <laughs> Ted has done phenomenal with our social media. Phenomenal. And that's probably related to what we're all talking about. And you have a reel, and I don't know if you brought something with you tonight, but, but we can talk about some of the things that you're, you're involved with. But all of these things pertain to social media. Right, right. It's all part of the building process of talking about an event, talking about a person, uh, and, and everything that you can put into the pie makes it more delicious, more palatable. And, and, and when you engage your audience in talking about things, like I found out some things when I did uh, Trip to Bountiful about Cuba Gooden Jr. Right. when he was in the first part, portion of it, about his sleeve size, I start putting that stuff right. out there. People love Because it stuff, engages sure. people and makes it more interesting. What about his sleeve size? He wears a 15 neck and I think he was and, and, 36. And talking size. about... Talking oh, I thought you meant something like... There was something special about his sleeve size. Okay. Now, now talking about, talking about social media, something right. related to that, and what people might be interested in. You're hearing, you know, folks, you're hearing, well, well, Andrea does this, and Andrea does that, and then Sonia does this, and Sonia does that. We're going to show you. We're going to show you what these people do. Right. Right. And this, tell us what a reel is. John, one second. We got a phone call. I just wanted to. Oh, know. okay. Can we have a question, please? Uh, yes. Uh, this is a question for Andrea and Sonia. Yep. I was wondering, do you think that major roles for women are more lim limited as they get older, and if so, why? Okay. Good question. Um. Yeah. Wait. What? What did she? I, I she was asking if if role major roles for women as they get older are more limited, and why? And I I think that it kind of mirrors society in terms of women. As women get older, uh, it's looked on as more negatively. When men get older, they're more dashing and more experienced. And it, it, it mirrors society. One thing I, I um, recommend for anyone, and I've certainly done it, is if you don't see yourself, then produce it yourself. Right. And so that's what I, I do a lot with films. That's also what I do with my musical show. It's because I wanted to be in a lot of the shows mm -hmm. around town, but you know, they, the way they were casting, whatever, I wasn't necessarily doing it. So then I'll do it myself. And then I get to sing everything. And, and because the main thing is you want to be working all the time. Stay busy. So for, for film, you can't sit there and wait, oh, I hope there's going to be a part in this for me. You know, and then there's, there's nothing. Whereas if you think about what do, what do I want to do, and like when we you do You become films, your own producer, essentially, right? Yeah, when we do our films, a lot of times when we're coming up with a plot, I tell the other actors, what do you want to play? And we'll write it that way so that you get to play who you want to play. Like I remember, was it uh, Cindy Lintel was in one of our films, and she wanted to um, play like this uh, trashy kind of gal. And she didn't usually play that. She usually played like an uptight housewife right. or whatever. And so that's the role she got to do. And then she gets to use this for her reel. So you can think about what's missing from, if you want to do it, like what's missing from my reel, or what do I really want to play. If you produce your own stuff, yeah. that's, we'll, that's now, a great way to do it. Before we actually show this, Top what, are actors do that too. what are we going to see on your reel? So this reel, because my current reel is online, so this is an older reel. Okay. Uh, so this, we're going to see a movie I was in... Um, Let's see. I, you know what? Show it, and then I'll know. Well, it's, like a, it's, it's like, like a, res it's like like a resume on film, so they pretty it's much, right? It's, it's what sells you. Demo reel. Pretty yeah. much. Demo yeah. reel. Do you want to grab a bite now or eat after? After. West Newton might be known for its beautiful homes, 
But this winter, it's the wildlife that's raising eyebrows. Ruffling feathers. You know, I can grab one of those croissant which things at Dunkin' Donuts. I'll be back here in five minutes. No. <laughs> you want me to say it's a real flock party? Whatever. It's a real flock party. I have your brochure, and, well, I wanted to ask about your facility. It's for my mother. I still have all that hair. <laughs> it's, it's in my closet. <laughs> the flamingo one was based on a true story. Um, a woman in Newton, I live in Newton, otherwise Newton. Um, anyway, uh, this woman put a flamingo in, in um, her yard in uh, the winter because she, she was from Florida and she felt it was kind of depressing. And uh, somebody uh, protested and I guess wrote to the city or something like that. And someone else uh, found out about it and thought that was awful and then other people started putting flamingos in their yard. So all over Newton, you saw people with flamingos in their yard that's because good. of that. Now, uh, that's a demo tape, of course. Mm -hmm. And in the theater world, Sonia, you can tell us a little about this, you don't necessarily have a demo tape. No, you, you have don't. A, what's called a monologue. Yes. Give us a little idea what that's all about. Uh, I'm sure you've had to utilize those a few times. Yes, it's a, it's a, uh, you're playing a role still but you're one person and you need to choose who you're speaking to and you perform it the way you'd perform on, you know, on stage regularly. Uh, my current monologue happens to be me playing Satan. Um, <laughs> and, uh, it's not a Dr. Faustus, uh, sort no. of like Dr. Faustus. It's actually a, a cut from Eric Bogosian's one-man show mm -hmm. in New York that I just, somebody happened to see it and thought, they actually said, so you use the this only to sell yourself I know. When, you're, when you're auditioning for production, yeah, you, for a play. Different people have different right. monologues for different types of auditions. Like mm -hmm. if you're going for a comedy, you might pick a comedic mm -hmm. monologue. If you're doing a drama, something to show that you can play the role that you're auditioning when for. You, when you were playing Satan, mm -hmm. you didn't go to the church for advice, did you? <laughs> no, <laughs> but my last audition was in a church. Oh, okay. So in other words, everything is related pretty much. I mean, what you're doing and... And a lot of theater is related to this as well. When I say Dr. Faust, that's, that's what that's about. That's from the you know, late Middle Ages. Right. But, but you're, you're, you're tailoring yourself to the director yes. because essentially they're tailoring it to the audience. And you can even change a monologue. You can do the same monologue and do it different ways, mm -hmm. tailoring it to your audition. Sometimes mm -hmm. they ask you to do that in an audition. Like you do it one way and they say, right. oh, can you just do it another way? Now, Jim, with, with like the audition, not the audition, but the production that you were on yesterday, The Finest Hour, um, we're dealing with people that are looking for pretty much males from, they can portray males from 1952, right? Well, yeah. And I haven't been on a boat in probably 35 years. So is this actually shot on a boat? Well, in the Quincy shipyards, mm -hmm. they put a tank out there. Mm -hmm. It was 110 feet long, 80 feet wide. Mm -hmm. You had to take a little boat out to the real boat, which was right. 36 feet. There was 875,000 gallons of water in it. It was 11 feet deep. So it was like an ocean. Plus they had machines to make waves. And the waves, if you're sitting on the boat, the boat was rocking with 27 of us on it. Did the anyone get seasick? Not seasick, but you, after three hours of sitting on you a boat, it. We're pouring rain because right. we had to make it like in a storm. Oh. They had to give us wetsuits underneath our clothes uh -huh. to keep dry, in a dry suit to keep dry from the wet. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't get damp. The clothes were completely wet. And we, right. we spent three straight hours on it filming with no breaks. And you're on the ship for three hours, and that's why I haven't been on a boat in 35 <laughs> years. Because <laughs> I was so wet. Great it, it, it didn't hit my skin, but it, it goes on your back, your neck, down right. your shirt, your mm -hmm. hands. But what a great they had to bring hot water bottles out to us. What a great opportunity, though, for, uh, for Massachusetts. Yeah. You'll Are you wearing hats? Some of us had hats, knitting hats on. Oh, because oh, I didn't know what the sailors wear. So okay. it, wasn't, it wasn't like bulk style. Kind of. Oh, so then so that would get soaked. That got soaked, and you had to rinse it out, put it back on your head, mm -hmm. 
and your head's already cold. Because the temperatures, they had to keep the temperatures between about 40 and 44 uh -huh. degrees in the building. So because they wanted to see your breath sometimes, because yeah. that's how it was in that era. You right. know, and it was cold. Like I said, hot water bottles had to come out and they had to bring us out water. Then they, when we got the back on to shore, I call it the shore, even though it's in a set. <laughs> right. They Dry gave land, us hot much. towels. Right. They had uh, tea, coffee, and hot apple cider, which I had never had, which was delicious. You've never had never hot had apple cider? Never had apple cider, huh? Really? What's wrong? And you're from here? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody said that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I said, this, hot, this apple cider is delicious. You, want, you, want, want, like, you know what? Like, hot yeah. apple cider is usually the norm at the Topsfield Fair. Okay. I've and the there. Big E exposition. Yeah. And and where Sonia and I both have an affinity for it's amusement six park, Six Flag, six yeah. flag you can get hot cider there as well. It's very popular in this area because it because of the the apples and because mm -hmm. of the location. Yeah. Never had it. It's yet yet so another good. thing you can do with apples. Yeah, I never had it. Well, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people, believe it or not, a lot of Bostonians have never climbed to the top of Bunker Hill because it's here and it's considered right. something that uh, only right. people from the outside come in to and do. We also don't go to duck tours, which I have never been on. Uh, yeah, I've, oh, been I've been on both of And there are lots of freedom. Right. I've done the Freedom Trail, but mm -hmm. most Bostonians don't do that. My mom used to lead the Black that. Heritage right. and, Trail. And, and, and tying all this together is that there's even a tour guide or, or, or a tourist production or a, a, a tour company that actually does tours for movies yeah, that Maven. are shot yep. here Palermo. in the city. Chris Palermo, yeah. oh, yeah, um, Chris Palermo, Mass Mavens, Mass yeah. Mavens. So that'll give you an idea, Ted, bringing into social media how important it is that we see the locations, the scenery, and how movies make a big well, impact in our economy. Well, that's all part of that whole uh, uh, production, if you right. will, that it brings tour and increases tourism. Okay, because people want to be at the place where uh, the actor mm -hmm. did, did Cheers the was sitting at the, like, you know, like a cheers Sam thing, was like sitting like at that. the bar or something, mm -hmm. right? You know, and, and, and that's what it does. Now, I, I looked at some statistics that what uh, productions did for New York City, they gave New York City $21 billion, Oof. created 50, 57,000 jobs. So this is what we're looking at for Boston. And, and I've always believed that Boston, Massachusetts, had more to offer than any of the states because we have a historical factor. Now, a lot of things happen right here in Boston. A trivia question. Streetcar named Desire, Marlon Brando, where did he get his start? Right here at the Wilbur Theater. 617-708-3280. 617-708-3280. We're talking about the motion picture industry. Sonia Joyner is with us, Andrea Lyman is with us, Ted Lewis is with us, and of course, my co-host, Jim Saya. So have either one of you, any of you been on the, either the Freedom Trail or the Black Heritage Trail? When we were at school, we all went yeah. through that school, and you're in the pub, Boston Public School System. Sure, we go on you that. You go through I, that. And I've given the, I've, I've brought people who have come into Boston, so I brought them, and you can follow the line, and right. bring, you, yeah. bring these people to the various places that they can see. But, but... Outside people have more of an interest somehow because they've been reading all about it and they want mm -hmm. to see it and they're here and they want to visit certain places right. where people who live here just see it all the time and they don't well, want to see it. One thing I've learned oh, is, is it's best to start at Bunker Hill mm -hmm. and do it sort of like backwards because when you start at Park Street, oh, then, yeah. then you, you are going farther and farther away Thank from you. food and yeah. bathrooms and all of that. Whereas when you start at Bunker Hill and go the you other go way, the other you're way. coming towards, towards the, the action. Mm -hmm. And I, I have some friends that, that yeah. came from LA and you know they would take the tour and I said, oh yeah, yeah, we just walk along and, and they, they were gonna buy like a guidebook. I said, well, I didn't need that because you know, it, you, you can read about the stuff um, you know, each place you go and it, it, it's like fine. Sure. And so sure. we started walking along and they would you know, see a statue or something and say, oh, and so what's this? And I'd be like, I don't, I don't know. And then we get to some other building, it's like, oh, I don't know. And it became the biggest joke because it's like, oh, you should have so bought one of those things. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, there, there's an app now that uh, this, uh, the state of Massachusetts has that you can, and, and it's downloadable, it's free, oh, and it will good. give you all those sites yeah. and what those statues yeah. are and things like that. So, matter of fact, that's where it was the person that helped bring that app to Massachusetts. They gave me the, the name as the, uh, the Prince of the QR Code. And, uh, and you talked about that the last time you were here. Right, you were showing right. People about but, you know, one thing I wanted to say uh, about uh, age and things like that, don't let that bar you from applying for these jobs because 
One of the things is they need what's, what's now called background actors, uh, extras for the set. And the demographic is everybody. And, and if you don't apply for these jobs, then somebody else will, uh, will come in and they, they can make, they can age me even more than I am now. Uh -huh. But I mean, they can age you. But the thing is, these are our jobs. This is what we're fighting for in this program is to bring, bring more productions to Massachusetts, apply for those jobs, and have fun. Yeah. Have fun. This, this whole area is so eclectic. We have so many things going on here. And I talked about just before we, we just took that little break, we were talking about the movie industry. And the reason I brought up Marlon Brando um, in the Wilbur Theater is because he did get that start, Streetcar Named Desire. Mm -hmm. That was right over here at the Wilbur Theater. And we have a very active very vibrant in a very important theater district mm -hmm. right here in Boston. Right. Mm -hmm. A lot Ted, of things from ART are just are going straight to Broadway now. Right, right. The no, newest one is uh, Finding Neverland. Mm -hmm. And all of us have been in theater. Right. All of us. You especially, you've been involved with theater for, for many years, and you've been involved with theater too. Mm -hmm. Musical theater, right? And did and, um, Shakespeare in the Park this, mm -hmm. this summer. That was fun. It was my first time doing Shakespeare in the Park. The cul uh, culture and arts, or cultural slash arts, is mm -hmm. so important. It, economically, it's important for the city, too, and for the state. And we have to keep that alive. We have to keep that going. What else is happening? Well, there's a lot of classes around here. Well, we also have, I, I didn't also realize. have a phone call, John. We, OK, we have a question. Can I have a question, please? Uh, hi, this is for Andrea and Sonia. Is there any special role that you haven't played that you hope to play in the future? Hmm. Mm -hmm. I can say yes, absolutely, positively. I would love to be cast in Shrek. Um, uh, Wheelock Family Theater is doing Shrek, Shrek mm -hmm. the musical. I auditioned for it. But um, I have no idea. But I love Fractured Fairy Tales, and that's what Shrek is, Fractured Fairy Tales with musical theater. So mm -hmm. to me, it's the best of... Okay. I would actually love to do Chicago. Mm. Oh, uh, any role? <laughs> oh, Mama. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to, to, to do that. Um, that's the last actual role that I have on my list that I haven't played. Well, I think the reason, like, and maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but there's not enough directors that are females. I think the question earlier is, is a woman get older, they're not getting hired. That's when I think men directors, most of them, aren't going to look for older females, where I think a female director would look for that type. I think that's the problem. We don't have enough females it's directing. It's also the way it's written. Yeah. What, the writers have to write roles for right. older women. But I think if it's a female director, they could put them in there for you. You know what I'm saying? They could you know, reach out a little more. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. if you had good female directors, a lot. Well, it seems like, and we were, talk, we were, talking, about, uh, we were talking with Andrea and we are talking with Sonia as well, everybody else, and Ted, of course, but everybody else has been on this show as well. They come with many hats. Yes. Uh, everybody, including Ted, mm -hmm. including Ted. Ted does our social media, but Ted's involved with acting too. Mm -hmm. Ted does all sorts of things. Jim as well. Everybody wears different hats. You have to. You see, you, I was going to say, you have to do things. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I get, that gives you, I think, a better understanding of the whole production, whether you work behind camera, you're an actor, uh, you do set design, you do music. Stand-up I mean, comedy, which I think is probably the most difficult. Right. That's just my you know, own I mean, guess. All of that is part of the production. And that's why, you know, you, you bar none. And that's why I'm saying to people, you never know when you're going to be discovered. And it's not as difficult as you think it is. Allow the director to direct, and you're, you're good as gold. I remember uh, reading uh, about this one production that was done over, I think it was in South Africa. and. The director went to this restaurant and he was watching the owner do something and he, he became very interested. He made an actor out of him and he so brought him into the production. So the thing is, you know, what I, what I ask the residents of Massachusetts is to be patient. Patient in your community because when they come in to do these productions, they will notify you, but things begin to change. I remember a friend of mine uh, over in Quincy, when they were doing Black Mass, uh, they were really upset, but later on, they all had fun, and you know, it was just an amazing production, and it all worked out.
but the main thing is that there will be some inconveniences, but look at what's going to happen. The possibilities of 57,000 new jobs here in Massachusetts. Yes. Isn't that what's important? And, and that's like the mayor of Boston. He lives right. in our town of Dorchester. Right. Right. I live in Dorchester. Right. Right. He lives in Dorchester. He's for the tax he's, incentive. He's, he's, he's a he's big supports. opponent. He's right out there in the front of it. Mm -hmm. And more jobs for Marty means more jobs for... Well, both it also promotes. But it helps everybody in the economy. It, prom it promotes the city too. Right. right. I mean, right now, Massachusetts. A lot of people don't realize this. Healthcare is is big here. Mm -hmm. and of course, education is big here as well, and and um, industry. You know, high tech industry too. But a lot of people overlook the tourism. I mean, people. It's so prevalent, and so in, in front of us that we overlook it. But tourism is like number two or number three in the state. Right. And, you and need that. the motion picture industry might make it number one. Right. And that's how come they build hotels. Don't, don't forget, when these people come in, they've got to stay somewhere. Right. They exactly. stay in hotels. They've got to build more hotels. That's right. They get more <laughs> restaurants. And this is how the economy grows. This is how you get jobs. Right. Right. Not just because you, that's right. Not because you're just doing movies. It's the people behind the set, like I said. Right. But there are people who actually will, I've heard say, um, actually one of the directors I'm working with right now, said she came here to come to school mm -hmm. because she had seen on television the seasons. Because you want to come well, that's someplace attractive. and experience. Right, that's season. attractive, right. Yeah. too. That's so attractive when too. you show that in the movies, it's like, oh, let's go see that. I want to see the foliage. Right. Mm -hmm. you know? The first film that I saw that was made and bought, The Friends of Eddie Coyle was late 60s. Oh, right. But that was done here, too, with Robert Mitchum. Mm -hmm. But there was also Love Story. Right. Mm -hmm. And that was filmed at... Don you Warner were, you were in was in there. Yes, yes, I he was. I wasn't in the movie, John. Not, not, not no, no, but you were in some years, Robbie. You were in a film <laughs> in, with Denzel Washington. Oh, yeah, The Great Debater. Right. Oh, it, I it, love that. It was filmed Square. That's yes, right. It was filmed at the same location, but with Love Story, it was the winter. It was a winter scene. Right. Mm -hmm. And everyone said, oh, it's kind of interesting. How that cool was filmed at Harvard, the ice skating rink, and that's what the movie was made about, Love Story. The Great Debaters was still filmed at Harvard. Right. And Harvard, used Harvard Studios it was in so Harvard. wonderful because you got to hear this, to work those award-winning speeches over and over. I mean, I could listen to that all day. It yeah. was incredible. Oh, yeah. I was, love the way Denzel the directed. I've never worked with a director the way he so Jim and I worked on, on last film with, that he... Equalizer. Equalizer. Yeah. It was filmed in Dorchester, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, worked, I had a great day on that. We had a good time. Yeah. Sonia, what, what's going on with the theater industry itself in, in Boston right now? Do you see it growing? You know? I see it growing. I see a lot more people getting involved and a lot more people um, doing a lot of local theater. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll take playwrights from here and produce those plays. So a lot of local playwrights are getting acknowledged right now. Um, I know that some of the smaller theaters are struggling, though. Mm -hmm. In terms of because finances. they're smaller, right? They're smaller, of course. And just trying to keep up. But with the Lion the King was here for what six months? I mean, look at these big productions here now for. Well, Annie starts tonight too. Uh, Annie's mm -hmm. been around for. Yep, Annie's going it's strong back. too. And Ted Trip to Bountiful, a phenomenal November success. November the twentieth. November the twentieth, they will open at the Cutler Majestic uh, Cutler Majestic uh, Emerson Cutler Emerson. Majestic uh, Theater. Yeah. And the Emerson that and that that belongs to Emerson College, which right. Jim and I right. often right. said a lot of kids from Emerson watch this program because right. they're involved with the arts. And we've had some of the Emerson students on. We've had some of the on students the on here. Sure, sure, sure. And I auditioned at Emerson College for a few plays. Oh yeah, I've done some films. Yeah, they call you up. A lot students. of films. Yeah, students. They had, they are very busy over there. Yeah. So we have theater, motion pictures, and people who want to be directors, writers, producers. And every anything else pertaining to the mo motion picture industry, right here. What a fertile ground that we're sitting on yes. right now, yes. mm -hmm. and that's why we have to keep nurturing it. Six one seven seven zero eight three two eight zero six one seven seven zero eight three two eight zero. We're cable casting live right here in Boston, Comcast Television Channel twenty three, RCN Channel eighty three. We're on the net, bnntv.org. We're li live streaming right now worldwide, folks. And also thanks to Ted. YouTube, YouTube, right? YouTube. <laughs> so we are international, folks. You know, these movies are seen worldwide. Well, we are, too. Right. Thanks to... And the show is being seen worldwide. The show is being seen worldwide. And the, the, the reason that we want to just push this, folks, is because this is an important situation, not only for Massachusetts, but it's important for the actors and the, and the acting community here 
in the New England area. And when I say New England, I'm talking about the people that, that are involved with the LDI projects, the people about Boston Casting, CP Casting, uh, Christine Wise, all of these people who work together. And the people that, work, that, that are actors and ancillary actors and whoever, whatever else they do, um, they have a chance to ply their trade. Right. And there's so many people working that you don't even know about. Like when you think about how many film festivals yeah, we have, right. we have the, um, we the have Underground it. Film Festival, yeah. we have the Roxbury International Film Festival, the Jewish International Film Festival is going on right, right. now, the um, Boston, the Boston International. International. African, uh, They're actually straight, the, the Roxbury International Film Festival is actually quite big. It is. Yeah. Yeah. A yes. lot of people don't realize that, yes. but that's, that's yes. actually yes. quite big. And yeah, that's Lisa been around Simmons for a while. Runs that. Yeah, that's, and Lisa that's Simmons quite big. also works for the Mass Film Office and you know right. tourism and all of yeah. that. We but, work yeah. together on uh, the community uh, advisory board for WGBH. Oh, okay. Right, right. I work with her. On Another that. thing that's here, WGBH, right. a lot of things. But right. there's so many. Uh, I mean, that's just for film, and then all the different theaters that are here there's and so the classes, theaters. and you know. Well, Matter of fact, talking about the theaters, I, when we went to see uh, Annie. I couldn't believe that the Wang Theater was just so immaculate and so beautiful with all that marble. Mm -hmm. I, again, we have more to offer in our theaters, and now that the, and it was the almost new electronics full, are almost coming a full in, house too. right, 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 and uh, should have seen from great uh, debaters there. You know, it's the, the, my claim to fame is blown away. I'm in the movie Blown oh, Away with Tommy right. Lee Jones and Jeff Bridges. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that was one of the first the films F1 here, F1? shown here, no, right? I was over at MIT. Oh, okay. Well, that okay. was one of the first films shot here, right? It was in Charlestown? Uh, 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 waterfront? Or? Well, I was in the uh, Cambridge side yeah. at MIT with right. uh, Jeff Bridges. Mm -hmm. and uh, They blew up the police car, didn't they? No, that was here in Boston. Okay. They blew that up, and they blew up the ship over in the shipyard. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, my part over there was the part of a police officer. And not only was I a real police officer, well, I was playing the part of a police officer uh, in, in that movie. And, you know, and, you know again, uh, it's important people understand that it's not about the actors. It's the totality of the production that it's businesses, whether it be lumber, uh, the, the canteen for the food, cleaning, mm -hmm. you know, uh, stuff like that, hotels. And you, see, you definitely see that on stage. Right. It, it, you right. have to work together on stage, or it just doesn't yeah. work, folks. Right. It just doesn't. You right. have to work right. together on stage. Right. Mm -hmm. You try to make sure that, like you say, you, you wear more than one hat when right. you're in this business. Right. Right. And that's, that's what the production does for Massachusetts. That's what the production does for Boston. And that's why it's important that we start bringing these productions here, bringing these movie sets here, and letting them do their thing so we'll have the jobs. Because if we don't take the jobs, guess what? There's people waiting out there. They will come down here and take yeah, the Yeah, and job. Jim and I had Chris Byers on a few months ago because Chris is involved with the right. New England studio. Right. He came oh, on right. and talked all right. about that. Right. And yeah. that's another thing, though. Also, if... if um, the people that come from New York and L.A. could cast some of the bigger roles here. Mm. Like we have actors here. And that's something here. that we, Jim and I, have often addressed on the program. We have the big stars here. Yeah, we have the Wahlbergs. We have Ben Affleck, Matt Damon. Right. People who started. You know, and that I wanted to bring up because a lot of people, and some of the, Arthur Wahlberg's been on the program. Boston, Dorchester, Roxbury, um, surrounding areas, Cambridge, so many people have come from this area that have gone on to other things. Right. Writers, directors, actors. Uh, Ray Flynn, for example. Ray Flynn's been on the program. Uh, years ago, Ray Flynn was on, and he came on and talked about a book that he wrote called The Accidental Pope. Now, Ray was, was the former mayor of Boston, right. plus he was the uh, ambassador. ambassador to the Vatican. Right. And he wrote a book, it's a very intriguing book, called The Accidental Pope. And he came on and talked about that. And I think that Ray is working on a screenplay as a matter of fact, and oh. Ray's, Ray's local, Ray's right here in Boston, so I think he's working on a screenplay. So Not only him, but Dennis Lehane, who's from Dorchester. Yep. How many movies that are now from his books? Right. He started out writing books, and now they're all over. He's right. writing a new book, I right. understand, right now, and they're trying to make it a, a screenplay, too. Right. Mm -hmm. So, local people, you right. know, and uh, so it's important. So we're trying to push this, but, but enormous amount of talent right in this area, and we've got to keep that here. Right, instead of us having to go to New York, other places. places. places right. right, that's what I always say. We try to keep us but, here. Right, and we see that in particular 
with Trip to Bountiful. We're seeing that now. We're seeing it from Broadway to Boston, Boston. versus Boston to Broadway. Mm -hmm. right. We s right, right. You know, it's, uh, and matter of fact, I think there are six productions coming here now. We have Kinky Boots is uh, talking oh, about coming here. Uh, uh, Motown is mm -hmm. coming mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. uh, Trip to Bountiful is here. Uh, and Annie's going to be here until the, until the 18th, is it? Is it? I think Annie's going to be here until the 18th. Now, Trip to Bountiful is going to be here. From, from November the 20th to December the 7th. Okay. okay. So it's only going to, it's a limited run. Right, much. right, right. It was in L.A. It's, it's here. It's and there's, here. Cicely Tyson is the star, right? She will be the main star. Vanessa Williams was in the, uh, was in the Broadway which production. Which was in the original. And then we have Blair Underwood. We lost right. Cuba Gooden Jr., and uh, but Blair Underwood, is an outstanding right. actor, and he's going to you know fill the role. We lost Didn't Tom Wolfe. Did he do it on Lifetime? Uh, yeah, right, right. Mm -hmm. right. But uh, I mean, this is what's happening, and and you know, like I say, you got to see it. Don't miss the Q and A at the Strand Theater. But you got to you got to uh, contact the theater so they'll know who's coming, and they, they'll have a seat for you. The important thing is go on the website. And sign up for your ticket. And not only that, you see a beautiful refurbished theater as well. Yes, yes. And that's and, and Andy said it's, it's free, right, Ted? Right, it's free. In 1962, my first time I went to the Strand Theater, mm. it was a nickel. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, so we I got in there when I was a little bit. <laughs> many years, we used to find down to a nickel down to nothing. What did you see? Sadly, Sadly. Yeah, my sisters and my brothers <laughs> took me to a, uh, it was a uh, movie. We went to see a movie. Yeah, that was, it used to be a movie theater. Movie theater. When we were, when we were younger, theater. it was a movie oh, theater. Mm -hmm. We used to go to the theater yeah. for a nickel. It was originally built as a vaudevillian house. Yes. Right, right, yes. And then it was, it actually, it cost more than any other place in Boston, I think, because it was so much to build, which was a fin you know, phenomenally expensive project when it was first built. But it was considered like the premier movie theater. And when you go see it, you'll, you'll understand why. And what happened was after Vaudeville, you know, Vaudeville died, it became a th movie yeah. house. Yeah. And then it ended like up Radio closing, City Musical, and then it was refurbished. Yeah. I actually got to perform there before it was refurbished. Mm -hmm. I did the vagina monologue there. Oh, okay. Wow. That was in town, too. They played that in town, didn't they also? I've been in a few different versions Venice. of that All in right. different places. Now, in the last, last few minutes of the show, what's, what's going on with you in the, in the foreseeable future? Uh, tomorrow, I'm working on a historical film about the Royal House in Medford. It was a mansion they, they had built uh, before the Revolutionary War, and they had a, a house for slaves um, also on the property. And when the, um, when the owner died, he had left in his will money for um, one of the slaves, and she didn't get the money, so she wrote a petition. She petitioned to get her um, money, mm. and that's what they're making this film about that. Sort of like a documentary, pretty much, right? Sort of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sort of like a dramatization. Uh, December 2nd, I will be performing in two of the eight plays being performed at Slam Boston at the Boston Playwrights Theater. Uh, Where is that? It's on Commonwealth Avenue, right across from the Gaines Arena. That's where we saw you in the, the last production. Right. Uh, then on December 12th, 13th, and 14th, Susical the at musical. Stetson Hall. Wow, that's great. In Randolph. And in January, uh, the Bee Bear Book Club, which is a, a collaboration between Brookline Interactive Group and the Brookline Early Education Program will be launching its third season, and I am the new host. Ooh. You'll also be able to see that on YouTube. That's now, Sonia, if we wanted to get in contact with you, how would we do that? Oh, wow. There are so many ways. You can look up Sonia Joyner on YouTube, look up Sonia Joyner on Facebook, and my, uh, you can get message me that way. You can uh, contact me on New England Actor. Mm -hmm. You, I don't think our film space still exists anymore, but those three places if you can get me, sure. you can just put in Sonia Joyner. Okay. The best way, I think, is New England Actors, mm -hmm. which is a great site that Bradley Van Dusen runs. Um, but also I have a website, um, andrealignman.com. And I just wanted to say, I think I might have said it, but I'm not sure. That another thing I'm going to be doing is Wes Williams 
movie. Oh, yeah, I did, because you were talking about C District C11. You also, I wanted to bring up something also. Jim, um, Andrea had been involved at one point with Broadway Lady Sings Christmas, the CD. Fact. I'll be doing a lot of those shows next month. And, and this is, yeah. these are all Christmas songs, right? Yes. Joy to the World, Jingle next Bells. Next week I have four time. shows that are non-Christmas, but next month I have many Christmas shows. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Busy lady. I was going to say. Yeah. All right. That's fantastic. Well, well, huh? <laughs> Ted, now, Ted, you're involved with all sorts of things. A lot of it's, <laughs> a lot of it's social media and a lot of it's not. Most of it is social media. Mm -hmm. I'm currently promoting City Strings which is an inner city cello playing uh, group of kids. Mm. And Bithia Israel is the founding uh, person who teaches inner city kids to play the cello. And uh, that's going along. They did, they performed the 96th uh, birthday of the Strand. The strand. Mm -hmm. And they, of course they performed here at uh, BNN for the anniversary also. Which is the 30th but, anniversary. Yeah, right, but the, my, the gist of my life is social media, and I'm having a ball, uh, meeting all kinds of people, and uh, looking forward to other things. Right. Now, just for the benefit of our home audience, what's exactly, what does social media mean exactly? Well, basically, the way I explain it is social media is a conversation where the world's looking, but your fingers are doing the typing. You type out something, someone, and you... Someone may find it interesting, and you become engaging, and you have a conversation. Someone else chimes in it, and then it begins to spread. Right. And the thing is, well, like what I'll do, uh, I'll put the show on YouTube, and I'll send the link out through social, through your Facebook pages, mm -hmm. stuff like that. And then I'll look at the analytics and see how people are looking at it, whether, and mostly it's through the telephone. And, and I say to people, stop talking about the telephone as a telephone, but as a computer. That's all it is, is a small computer, and it's your television and everything. That's all, your whole social center is right there. And that's how they're seeing the program. Hmm. Jim, what's going on with you? Lots, lots of things, too, right? John, when I come to this show, I look for two things. Just two things when I get here. Okay, we have interesting guests, which right. we do. And what they care about me, I do nothing. <laughs> all right, after the show, I go home, and if the phone rings, if it rings, it doesn't. But you've been in, you're, you're in films. Right, and I'd just be lucky sometimes to be in a film here and there. We all get the luck of the draw, mm -hmm. you know. It's no big game to anybody, you know. We all go into auditions. We all hope to get in the movies and stuff like that. And sometimes they call, sometimes they don't. And we're pushing for tax credits. Tax credits are Tax board. breaks, we're That's pushing right. for that, and we're hoping that you're pushing for it too. Mm -hmm. So on your joiner, Andrea Lyman, Ted Lewis, Jim Sayer, and myself, have a great night. <laughs> <laughs>